Solomon's Temple. We're not Solomon. This is uh. down, 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 175, 180 steps to explore this incredible water system. Mount Carmel, or Carmel, statue of Elijah. We're at the church on top of the hill, and we're going upstairs. Something like that. It's picking it up. <laughs> Something that meanders. You see a shiny yeah. thing. Looks like a road. You see it? It meanders. It goes all the way to the sea. Folks, before I read the story, you get your tour over there. Then send and gather to me all Israel at Mount Carmel, together with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asher, who eat at Jezebel's, take to Jezebel's table, Jezebel being the wife of King Ahab, uh, a wicked old honey. 
So Ahab sent a message among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? Now that's really the question that God keeps asking us, too. How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. In other words, decide if you're going to follow God or decide if you're not. But the people didn't answer a word then. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now let them give us two oxen. Let them choose one ox for themselves and cut it up and place it on the wood and put no fire under it. And I'll prepare the other ox and lay it on the, the wood and I'll not put fire under it. Then you call on the name of God and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answered and said, this is a good idea. And don't you know they were excited, looking to see what was going to happen. <laughs> so Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one ox for yourselves and prepare it first for you are many and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. Then they took the ox which was given them and they prepared and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, answer us. That's a long time. Uh, what, would be, what would dawn be, Monty? Richard, five, five hours, yeah. six hours from... Uh, well, in Tiberius, you'll see it's up at five o'clock in the morning. Okay, so it, maybe seven hours there. Long time out there calling. Um, and it came about at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Call out with a loud voice, for he is a god. Either he's occupied or gone aside. And, and the actual Hebrew there means either he's uh, gone to the bathroom or something. He was suggesting he was really making fun of it. Or he's on a journey. Or perhaps he's asleep and needs to be awakened. Elijah was really working on it. So they cried with a loud voice, and they cut themselves according to their customs with swords and lances until the blood gushed out on them. Sometimes they would just cut across their chest and all to, to bring forth the favor of, of their gods. And it came about about midday was passed, and they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. And there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. And Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. So with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two measures of seed. Let me see. Uh, equals approximately 11 quarts uh, of seed does. Uh, Two measures of seed equals 11 quarts. Then he arranged the wood and cut the oxen pieces and laid on the wood. And he said, fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Now realize this, they're in a drought, y'all. No water. Remember Ahab's big uh, uh, thing we just saw? So for him to call them to pour four pitchers of water on this big altar, that took a lot of faith for him to do that because there was such a shortage of water. And he said, do it a second time. Do it a third, uh, second time. And, it, and he said, do it a third time. They did it a third time. And the water flowed around the altar, and it also filled the trench with water. And it came about at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came there and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that thou, O Lord, art God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon, that he just showed you, and slew them there. And now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound and the roar of a heavy shower. And Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, where we are. And he crouched down the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. He said, Go back. He told him this seven times. And he came by the seventh time. He said, Behold, a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. So it came about in a little while that the sky grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy shower, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and outran Ahab to Jezreel. So he's a pretty good athlete, too, <laughs> as well as being a man of God. And, and in James, if you'll read that later on today, you'll see where he is seen as a, a, to show us the power of a man of prayer. A 
Elijah is our example. The power of a praying man availeth much.